please open up to page 32 in your ISM. We're going to start the gravity notes and then do the orbital motion notes. Meet Sir Isaac Newton. If it wasn't for Sir Isaac Newton, what we know today about gravity and orbital motion wouldn't exist. Isaac Newton first realized that there was force acting on objects. Now he had that famous experiment, famous moment in time when the apple fell from the tree and hit him on the head and it was that aha moment. I'm not sure if it's really true, but hey, it works. <laughs> um, Isaac Newton said that the force pulling on uh, the moon, uh, pulling the moon towards the earth is called gravity. And that's what caused this apple to fall and hit him on the head. Newton was a very bright man, and he came up with laws that explain why these different phenomenons are happening. Newton's law of gravitation states that every object in the universe is attracted to each other, which means we're attracted to the Earth, the Earth is attracted to the Moon, and so on and so forth. There are different factors that affect gravity. And if you think about it, gravity is not the same everywhere. For example, we've seen pictures of astronauts floating in space. And when they walked on the moon, it was kind of like they were hopping. So the strength of gravity depends on, the first thing is the mass of each object. And mass is the amount of matter in an object. So if you look at this guy over here, each of these weights is a, has a different amount of mass. Now you have mass, and that's the amount of stuff in an object. That's not going to change when you go from place to place. But when you add the force to it, something else is changing. So the measure of the force of gravity on an object is called weight. The mass never changes, but an object's weight can change depending on its location. If you look at the guys up on the top, this guy over here weighs 100 pounds, and he's located on Earth. This guy over here is located on the moon and weighs 16.6 .6 pounds. His mass isn't changing. But what's changing is the Earth's mass and the Moon's mass. Because he weighs more on the Earth, the mass of the Earth is much bigger than it is on the Moon. So as we finish, the more mass of an object, the more weight. And that could be seen from this guy being on the Earth and the Moon. So we've talked about two main points already. The first point is that the force of gravity acts between all objects. What this means, like we said before, is that we're attracted to the Earth, the Earth is attracted to the Sun, and so on and so forth. The second thing that's here is that if the mass increases between the objects, the force of gravity is going to increase. So if we look at the picture of the first set of spheres, they're much smaller than this set of spheres because the mass increased in the second one. That means the force of gravity, shown by the arrows, increases as well. Well, if you notice, there's a third thing that's right here, distance. So gravity is also affected by distance. Now, if you notice in the picture, the size of the sphere is the same as the size of the sphere in the top picture. The problem is, or I guess the factor is, is that the spheres are now farther apart. And because they are farther apart, if you notice, the force of gravity is weaker. See, so if you look at that arrow right there, see the arrow is much shorter than this arrow over here. So as we increase the distance, we actually have weaker gravity. 
probably kind of like if you think about it is opposite of the, the second one. We increase the mass, more gravity, increase the distance, less gravity. So it's safe to say the force of gravity decreases rapidly as the distance increases. So if the distance between two objects doubles, meaning they get farther apart, kind of like what we have over here, okay, they got farther apart, then the force of gravity is going to be about one-fourth there, one-fourth the original value. It's just saying as we get farther apart, we're going to get weaker gravity. You have this picture on your foldable on the top flap. You can fill in the arrows now to represent what happens when you increase the mass and increase the distance. Please turn to page 34 in your ISM. We're going to go over the inertia and orbital motion foldable. We're going to start off with inertia first. That's going to be the first two slides, and the last slide is going to be orbital motion. It's important to know that gravity has to deal with inertia and orbital motion. Now, if you look at this picture right here, here's our Earth, here's our Moon. This Actually, these white bulges right here are, are our ocean waters, kind of showing tides. Now, I just wanted to point out these little white lines right here show that the Earth and the Moon are pulling on each other. Remember that gravity is a force of attraction, so things are attracted to each other. So it's important to know that the Earth, Sun, and Moon are constantly pulling on each other. Well, that's nice, but if they're constantly pulling on each other, wouldn't the Moon just pull right into the Earth? That's where this thing called inertia comes in. So, inertia is the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. Now, below is an example. So here's our lovely bus right here. And in our bus, our bus driver right here stops short. If you notice, all of the people, when the bus stops short, want to just keep going in this uh, direction. Because although the bus stops short, their body's still moving in that direction. And they keep wanting to go in that particular direction. The sumo wrestler. Quite possibly my favorite example when it comes to this particular topic. I say this because you could use the sumo wrestler to talk about mass. You could use the sumo wrestler to talk about weight. You can use him to talk about gravity. And in this case, we're going to use him to talk about inertia. Now, inertia is the tendency of an object to resist a change in motion. Right now, this big guy and this little guy aren't moving, so they are at rest. Inertia says they're going to try to resist it. Well, they can, but when you think about it, when they are going to start to move, who's going to move faster? This big guy right here? Or this little guy right here. If you said the little guy right here, you're correct. Because he has a little, well, he's a lot less mass than this guy. Now the problem is, this guy has so much mass that once he gets started, it is going to be very difficult to get him to actually stop. So that mass is going to take him to keep going and going and going until finally, he'll finally stop. It's important to know. Even though they're at rest here, they're going to stay at rest until they resist that change in motion. Once they become in motion, it's going to be very, very difficult for them to stop. And we notice that this guy right here, it's hard for him to stop while he's moving, and it's hard for him to actually get going as well. So like we discussed before, the more mass an object has, the greater the inertia and the harder it is for it to stop moving, or start moving. If you think about a garbage truck, and you pull up next to it, it's very difficult for that garbage truck to actually start moving faster before you. So, that's kind of showing inertia, because it's resisting that change to actually move. Now the second part over here, again, Newton was that guy. Newton kind of discovered everything at one point in time, it seemed like. And he was the first to realize 
inertia and that it exists. And because of that, he was able to name a law after himself. Now, you'll real, soon realize that Newton has several laws named after himself. But this one is Newton's first law. Oops. Of motion. And that again says an object at rest stays at rest and an object in motion will stay in motion until a force is acted upon it. Now if you think about the force that's acted upon this guy right here to actually have it stop moving, well, there's gravity if he does fall. And there's one that we kind of talked about briefly in our WWK, which is friction. Because as his feet's rubbing against the floor, it kind of has him stop as well. Two things that we've sp spoke about already has been gravity and inertia. These two things are very important because when these two things combine together, they help us give us the circular pattern in which our moon, our earth, our other planets follow. So if you look extremely closely at this picture, here's a picture of our moon right here. Our moon is being pulled to, towards the earth. Our moon wants to be pulled towards our earth at all times. Well, it's not pulled directly on our surface because of inertia, because our moon wants to keep moving in a straight path. Well, we don't have a straight path because we're getting a pull. So it's kind of like we're being pulled this, we're being pulled straight, but as we're being pulled straight, gravity is pulling us closer towards the Earth. Same thing for us if we're the Earth. We're doing the same exact thing as we go around the sun. We want, might want to go this way, but we can't because the sun is pulling us towards it. So we're forming an elliptical shape rather than floating off into space. So what we know f f for the first blank is that inertia, explains why our Earth stays in motion. So it stays in motion because of inertia. It does not want to resist that change. But it creates that elliptical pattern because of gravity. It's pulling on that Earth. These two things combine to allow for orbital motion to take place. Very difficult to understand why this orbital motion happens. But if you remember that the two main important parts, inertia and gravity combine to allow that orbit elliptical shape, in some cases circular shape to happen, then you should be okay.